Hello, hello, hello. Good morning, everybody. I'm just doing a quick audio check, making sure I'm good to go. All right. Sounds like I'm good to go. All right. Happy Saturday, everybody. Welcome to Romero Threads on YouTube, where it's all about embroidery. In today's Saturday morning embroidery class, I'm going to talk about efficiencies in uh so when i first came up with the topic um how to work faster smarter uh more efficient okay really i could go two ways okay i could go uh uh which we're going to talk about today is the digitizing portion of moving a little faster okay moving a little uh a little quicker and a little bit more efficient all right but we can also go the other route kind of like the business side route uh, because I think the the amount of time it takes to complete a project, it's not only in the production wise, it's not only in the digitizing wise, it's also in the beginning stages, um, beginning with the initial contact with a customer, all right, all the little small details that goes into completing a project. All right, so I definitely, uh, there is going to be a part two to this type of efficiency, or even like part three, four, five, because um, moving faster, moving smarter is always a topic that's always good to talk about. All right, so uh, we're definitely gonna stay on this type of topics um, every every so often. All right, so good morning. All right, so as you can see today, I am going to digitize our skull or calavera, especially it being uh, October. Uh, very popular, right? This design, you see it everywhere right now. Um, very popular, a lot of details into it. Okay, the reason why I chose this one for this type of project, because there's a thousand different ways to start this project right here. Okay, we can go so many different routes. Uh, a lot of it depends. A lot of it depends on, um, we have conditions that we got to meet. Okay, so depending on the size that we're going with. Okay. We're gonna have certain rules that we have to follow depending on the size of our artwork. Okay, so here for today, let me show you. I have it here in the on the software here. All right, um, we're gonna go with a 2.5 today. All right, so once we go 2.5, reason why I'm choosing 2.5 that way it is uh, hat friendly and polo shirt friendly all right but definitely it is something we can go a little bigger all right so the bigger the the design the more detail we can get all right the only thing with more details is more stitches and so that's all stuff we want to think about and talk about today all right so uh we're actually going to go we're going to straight we're going to jump straight for uh, into the analyzing part okay before digitizing i always like to analyze my artwork I want to um, kind of go over what's first, what's the first thing we want to do, okay? Uh, this one here is in black and white, but of course, we have the ability to add whatever colors we want to, okay? So let's go ahead and let me switch screens here. All right. All right, all right. We'll get, we'll, I'll get back to the good mornings, all right, because today... We are going to move a little fast because it is a jam-packed day for us here at the shop. All right. All right. So I'm right here at the light box. All right. So this is, uh, I printed out a printout of a uh, of the artwork that we're going to digitize today. Okay. Uh, I kind of blew it up so we could kind of get a better view of this. All right. But it is going to become very, very small. So I got my ruler here. All right, so we're looking from here to 2.5. All right, so it's going to be pretty small, right? It's just blown up here. Okay, uh, what I want to do, all right, I'm going to change it up color wise. Okay, right now it's in black and white. Um, what I want to do, I want to make the eyes its own color. So I'm going to make this blue. All right, I'm going to, I want to start with the, with the middle part of the design. So I'll probably start with this first. Okay, and when we're talking about efficiency, this is kind of the, the stuff we want to do whenever we're uh, setting up a project. 
is kind of have a game plan. Uh, that way, when we're digitizing and when we're embroidering, right, we have a game plan and we want to stick to that game plan uh, as much as we can. Of course, we can always switch things up if something's not adding up. We always want to uh, make sure that uh, if we have to make any adjustments, right, it's always for a reason. OK, so I'm going to do I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to I'm going to uh, do the eyes portion first and sits in the middle and then the nose and then here. OK, so I, I'm kind of I'm kind of. Limited with all the details that we have here, OK, especially since I'm going to go at a two point five size. OK, I kind of have in the back of my mind what I should and shouldn't do. OK, so what I want to do. OK, I'm going to combine this nose together and when we're digitizing, I'll kind of show you. Why I'm doing certain stuff, right? So here, instead of instead of having two different pieces, I'm going to put them together here. All right. So it could be one fill, one big fill stitch. All right. This eyebrows here. And really what I what I want to do. The reason why I did this one here, I want to have a template. And that way I could like switch up this goal with different types of designs that I have in mind. All right. And then today, this goal, I'm going to have it. Um, I'm going to have it available for a free download. All right. That way you could switch it up and kind of change it up how you want it to. All right. So really kind of this is like the drawing that I have here. This is kind of like the template that I'm looking at. I, I actually wanted to delete this this little flower part too, right? So here, right, we have like a uh, just like a template. So you could let's say like here, like on the skull, you could put your own customized uh, image here. Really, what I want to do later today with this blank space, I'm gonna put like the LA sign right here. All right, I know you've seen that one before right right so you could do like a lot of stuff right you could put like your own designs but the main thing is to have this blank space so you could kind of do your own thing you put san diego you could put any of your uh right your your favorite teams and all that right just kind of an idea all right um so here you could kind of tell yourself what kind of font what kind of stitches you want right i'll put a t for a tatami stitch or a fill stitch, okay? So I kind of have an idea. These, right, these are all sand, sand stitch, so I'll put an S, right? All right, so I'm gonna have these its own color, right? Uh, I'll, uh, yeah, this black portion, this first part, with, I'll, ask, I'll also add these lines here, all right, and then, like I said before, since we're going real small, all right, there's certain pieces of the design that we can omit. For example, these little dots, I really don't need the little dots, okay? Now, if you're working with a logo that has certain requirements, then you just gotta work around it. You gotta figure out a way to include small details, okay? But since I kind of have control and I'm making my own template, I kind of have control of what I want to uh, keep and what I want to exclude. All right. So you're just kind of giving yourself an idea here. All right. That way, when we start um, digitizing, all right, I kind of have an idea of, of my angles of my stitches. All right. This nose, I'll make a, a fill stitch also. So I'll put a Tommy. All right. And then here, okay, when I do this outline of the skull, okay, notice uh, this part of the skull is pretty consistent, like in size. So I can make one full stitch up here. Okay, here is what I call critical points. It's like a three-way street, okay, three-way street. So you kind of want to have an idea of how you want to draw up your pieces. I can put three different, I mean, two different uh, types of stitches. You could put three lines coming together or you could have two up here okay same thing here 
right? We have critical points. Um, here, yeah, we have one here, one coming down. And then same thing here, let me see. We kind of have a uh, consistent sand stitch right here that we can just go with. All right, and then here, we have a critical three-way street, okay? These are kind of like area of focus. Let me circle this part. This part here, when we're like digitizing, okay? This is kind of area where we kind of want to uh, nicely blend in our sand stitches together, all right? And then we have the rows, okay? Uh, even though I, I am going to blank this, this place out, I still want to keep this rows also. All right, so the rows, we can make it red. What I want to do is make a full fill stitch. Actually, it's like this, yeah. Minus that part. All right, and then come in and make these lines to put the detail of the rows, all right? And then... We want to do all this with minimum cuts as possible. So even though we're running these these black lines here, okay, we want to all make this into one full stitch with the black part here. All these details, all right? Now, let me kind of show you. Um, so a lot of times you, you're going to... Uh, digitize sample out and it's not going to come out as expected all right so i actually have a sample of my round one when i first digitize this all right let me show you right here all right and i kind of want to show you uh like the behind the scenes of how i go about when i sample out my samples all right so this was kind of like my game plan that i had here okay and when I went and I actually digitized it, okay, let's go ahead, let's zoom it in. All right, so this here, 2.5, right? So uh, let's see, yep, 2.5, okay. So here, okay, a lot of lessons learned that I have here, right? Here I, I did the leaves uh, yellow because I didn't have any uh, green at the at that at that moment. I didn't have a green thread, and this was just a sample. All right. So here, when I'm doing my first stitch, my first design, I have a jump stitch here, so I didn't cut it. So just kind of never mind that uh, that jump stitch there. All right. Uh, this was round number one. Okay, so every time you're doing a sample stitch, you're going to learn a lot of information on your first run. Okay, for example, here, I wanted to, let me get a pointer, something to point with. Um, let's start with the rows, okay? I, I, I put a uh, triple stitch on the black lines, all right, and it started to get very dense. The leaves... Okay, they're orange here. They should be green. Okay, if you notice, I, I digitized them exactly like how the picture, right? Kind of like the how the picture, like how the picture was. All right. By the time they become this small, they kind of hide, right? They're hiding. So this is all information that I'm taking in. So I know on my second round, okay, I want to overemphasize these leaves. Okay, so when we're digitizing, in the back of my mind, I'm like, hey, instead of digitizing it according to uh, exactly like the picture, all right, I want to make it a little bigger, all right? Maybe this detail with this little curve, all right, maybe it might be unnecessary because it kind of doesn't go with it, all right? So that's with the rows, all right, my, um, my outlines. It's all right in thickness, okay? This, uh, I believe, actually, I have the notes here. As you can see, what I like to do is the stitch out, I'll print out, 
Okay. I think this is very useful right here. I would recommend you uh, keep your samples instead of just kind of leaving your samples by itself. I would recommend doing your sample, cutting it out, stapling it to an X to a printout, and then writing your notes on the specs of this. So for example, here, um, I put that I put a pool comp of 0.35, all right? A little thin, all right? So on round number two, okay, you're gonna see my round two when I made adjustments, all right? I go with a 0.5 pool compensation, all right? Uh, let's see, what else? Uh, here, I'm kind of showing the, the distance of my petals, my green petals uh, on my leaves, okay? Just to kind of, because six months from now, when I revisit this paper, I'm going to forget everything that I did. So by having all these notes here, all right, it's just a reference for my future self that I have, all right? Now, after I make these adjustments, all right, let me zoom in right here. All right, I come up with this one here. All right, so after minor tweaks, let me get a good zoom. All right, so let's see if we could see it. Let me kind of line it up. All right, so a lot of times designs, all they need is like a small little tweak. All right, so here, right, it's so subtle, like the changes. Let me zoom out a bit. The the changes are so subtle. Okay, so I wanted this rose to kind of stand out. All right, so if we're looking at this rose now, okay, you can see how that green, the green portions of the leaves, they really stand out. Instead of going with a triple, these triple black lines, like how I have them here, I went with single single all right so you could see how it kind of stands out all right instead of putting all that detail in the leaves all i did was put one little small piece of thread right running through and you can tell that it's a uh, the green portion of the leaf all right hold on let me see if i can get all right i think it's pretty focused all right, and then here, the outline, you can see the shading. It's very subtle. These changes are so subtle, okay? These changes are so subtle, but they really stand out. Uh, so the skull, I brought it up a bit, to uh, a little higher, just to kind of make that rose stand out a bit. And then the border of the skull, instead of having this one here, has a 0.35 pool compensation. This one has a 0.5 pool compensation. All right, and right now when I'm digitizing, you're gonna kind of see what I'm talking about, right? So if, if you kind of don't know what I'm talking about, I'm gonna explain it right now when I get into the digitizing. All right, uh, and then the teeth, I kind of digitized it two different ways, but I'll show you right now. All right, okay, so overview right here. All right, so here, same thing, I'm just gonna staple this. I'm going to staple this my sample sheet with these notes and I'm just going to fill it up with notes here. All right. But as I'm going to use this school just as my template. So if I want to make any uh, designs on his forehead. All right. And if I make this school bigger, then I could start adding a lot of the extra uh, details that I have right there. All right. All right. Uh, let me shift over. All right, turn this off right here. Get into the software. All right, let's do a quick good morning. All right, good morning. Good morning, Bevy Jean. All right, I know the weather's changing, right? It's starting to get cold. I actually have this kind of sweaterish that I have right now. I think it's uh, 30 degrees, 30, see, 37. Yeah. Season's changing. I like the cold because as soon as it drops, I think 35 degrees, all right, beanie orders just start coming in. All right. So that's why I love, I love the cold. 
All right. Good morning, Michael Dahl. Salty Gravy from Wisconsin. Martin Sanchez. All right. Welcome. New YouTube member. All right. Just FYI, uh, we do have here at Romero Threads, we do have a uh, YouTube member ship program. It's $19.99 a month. And a lot of the files that I create, a lot of just side projects that I'm working on. All right. I'm going to drop them into our uh, member section of YouTube. All right. So for those who uh, want extra information, uh, I'm going to I'm going to chop up a lot of the live embroideries that that's on the replay. OK, a lot of them are like two hours. I'm going to chop them up into uh, a smaller version so it's easier to kind of just listen to and uh, follow through. OK, so a lot of a lot of stuff happening in the background uh, behind the scenes with our YouTube membership. So highly, highly uh, encourage you to uh, sign up. All right. Uh, TMG, good morning. All right. T-Towns, good morning. Robin, Thetis, Maximus. All right. Finally made it. All right. Good to have you. Rhonda, good morning. Simbawa, Simbawa. Let me see. Simbawa. Hello there. Thanks for listening. Kempler, Uganda, East Africa. All right. All right, 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 right. Salty gravy, like like the rose. I, I think it really stands out. Looks very, very clean. Uh, Pablo, good morning. Barb from North Central Minnesota. All right. Bam, bam. And then T-Town. Yep, that's pretty smart. Turning on the heat press, right, as a heater. All right, let's go. Let's start digitizing. All right. Uh, let me see. Let me zoom in right here. All right, we're good to go. If you have any questions or anything, uh, put a cue right there. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna digitize this. We're gonna stitch it out. All right, live embroidery. Uh, I think that's the best way to learn is to actually uh, to after digitizing to stitch it out and see for yourself. Have your lessons learned um, and see how we can create things better. All right, so here. All right, we kind of can't. We kind of already went over the game plan. Let me add all my my three items here. All right. Uh, all right. So when we start digitizing, you're gonna see up here where it says trims. It's gonna go up very, very high. All right. And uh, the name of the game is to keep our. Uh, the name of the game is to keep uh, the trims as low as possible. All right. So and whenever we're digitizing, we're we kind of thinking about how many. Uh, how many cuts do we have? All right. But a lot of that we're going to we're going to minimize at the very end. All right. So right now let's start with the eyes. OK. Different ways to do eyes. Right. We could just. Uh, make it it feels like a perfect circle. We could do it like this. Let's turn this into a tatami stitch. H, right? Uh, we're giving its characteristics to our file. Um, underlay, let's put tatami stitch and H. Uh, where do you want to start? Where do you want to end? I want to start here. All right. I want to end, I end right here. And reshape when you push the reshape and a lot of these buttons they're all compatible to whatever program you have okay um, so a lot of the stuff that i'm doing here you can do it a lot with different programs all right here i'm just going to kind of adjust it to kind of fit this uh, all right then once we got that, I could just right click it and pull it right to the side. All right. Uh, even though when I pulled it here, this is like symmetric here. But I could just fix it. Let me see. Let me bring it down a bit. All right. We look good right there. Uh, and then I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to do these lines up here. These are just running stitches. So I'm going to go with my digitized open shape. 
Okay, I'm kind of thinking about where I want to start. So I'm starting with this with this fill stitch here. Then I'm going to jump to this stitch. I'm ending here where that cut is at. Okay, but I'll start here. Uh, here we'll just put a roundness, and then it becomes a sharp. All right. Uh, so digitizing it is very tedious, a lot of repetition, but uh, once you get into a flow, once you start moving, once you start learning your shortcuts, uh, digitizing becomes a little quicker than than when you really start. All right, thought it froze for a second. All right, we're good right there. Uh, so the good thing about digitizing software it's like just regular graphic design work where uh, a lot of it is uh, copy paste. Uh, all right, here, this is where I started. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to end right here. So I'm going to do this, this, enter. All right, reason why I want to end here, because I'm going to jump over here to this side. All right, so I'm going to grab this, uh, duplicate. Okay, I'm going to duplicate it, then I'm going to flip it, flip it, and then I'm going to change the position. All right, so all I did kind of was copy and paste, uh, and then kind of line it up so it can match my, my line here. So sometimes uh, certain, certain artwork, they're not perfectly symmetric. All right, but we I think we're good here. All right, H, I want to see where I'm starting. So, all right, we'll actually uh, sequence it later. All right, then I get to this nose. This nose, like I said before, we could put all this detail into it. All right, it's, it's very small, so I don't want to get too detailed where I'm going to start uh, introducing unnecessary uh, just tie-ins and tie-outs and It'll look better if I just keep this as one piece. Okay, here, this this part here, I want it to be flat, right? I want that part to be flat. Then we're just gonna do a simple trace, all right? Uh, one of the most important thing in digitizing, and I had I had one of the live shows about it. If you want to learn how to uh, digitize. I would say to uh, just learn how to digitize shapes first. Okay, once you know how to digitize shapes, uh, pretty much everything's straightforward from there on. All right, all I did was fix that angle there. All right. Uh, all right, bam, bam. So I got these three colors. So here's where I sequence it. Uh, I want to do this first, this second, jump here, jump there. Then to the nose, and then up here on my top right, it says uh, sequence by selects. Okay, I click that, and depending on how I clicked it in that order, it'll put it in that order. All right. So you could do the sequence either now or you could wait to the very end. All right, I'll just do it now because that way I don't have to think about it again. So I'm just looking at where I start, where I stop. Uh, I want to switch this one here, start here and here, and then my tatami fill H, start here and here, select here H, all right, start here because it's going to jump, okay, oops, and up here, all right, right now it's showing me two trims, I want only one trim out of all this. So uh, what I'm going to do, I do not want cut here. I don't want to cut here. I don't want to cut here, I'll cut here. Then at the very end, I want to cut. So I could go to connectors, trim after, off. All right, so I have these trims right here, all right? I could just manually cut these 
All right, just so I don't stop the machine. All right. All right, though, that goes for the eyes right there. All right. Now, let's go ahead, let's do this rows. All right, so like I, how I showed you in the beginning, if I were to digitize it exactly like how it's drawn up right here, okay, I'm going to lose a lot of the details. All right, so what I want to do, I want to uh, over exaggerate on some of the on some of the details here all right so i'm going to make the rows fill stitch all right so like for example this this corner here all right i kind of want to make that kind of stand out a bit all right so what i'm talking about is instead of stopping here bring it out like here okay and then same thing here Bringing this out a bit. All right, I'm just kind of making it bigger than what it really is. All right, a lot of times just with uh, regular artwork, it's fine to do this. Uh, if you're working with certain logos where they need it exactly, then that's a whole different story. Sometimes you got to change logos around and uh, explain to the customer why certain logos cannot be embroidered. And then I'll, I'll jump on the questions in a bit. Uh, let me just get this trace right here. All right, so it looks like this, right? It just looks like this random blob right now. Okay. Um, so right now, I just want to fix the angle that I want to go in. All right, that's fine right there, H. Now I want to start down here and up here. All right. Do this red right here. All right, um, what's going to bring out the details is when I add these black lines right here, the actual uh, outline. All right, now let's do these green, the green leaves. All right, so here, uh, I want to come inside a bit. And I want to make the leaves bigger than what they really are. All right, because if I were to... Uh, Digitize them exactly, we would barely see the leaves. All right, so I'll start with this one. Make a walking stitch from here to here to my next one. Then put my next one here. Bam. So I want to make it bigger than what it really is. H. Just want to fix this angle. Uh, let me see where this. Oh, there it goes. All right. Then the red is going to go above the green. So my walking stitches are going to get covered. Put another walking stitch to my next one. All right. It's just like I'm walking from one area to the next. Uh, put it from here. All right. H. All right. And then put my walking stitch. All right. Right now it looks like straight garbage right now but once we sequence it once we put everything in order right everything starts coming together all right um i think what helps what helps me a lot is when i plan it out in the beginning and having that plan i kind of there's like uh it all makes sense like all this chaos that's happening right here Okay. 
oops, hold on. I selected the wrong uh, tool. Let me do that again. Oops. Like if you mess up, you could just push backspace. All right, H. All right, and then TT. All right, so we start here, walk up there, do this, come up here, then come up there. Uh, put that green right below. All right, so right now when I replay, let's replay this. Uh, oh, there it goes. Stops and then. All right, I got to push closest joint, apply closest joint. All right, let's try that again. Bam. All right, good. I'm just making sure I don't have any unnecessary cuts as we go. All right. Uh, now it's the fun part. Okay, this is the part where we trace our rows. All right, now. Now, let's see. Bam. Mm -hmm. All right, what I'm going to do, okay, uh, digitize open shape, okay, uh, I'm going to start with the out, the outline, okay, I'm going to start with the outline, and then I'm going to go in and do all the details, all right, so I'm going to use uh, our, um, the actual trace that I use as my outline, all right. So I'm going back and forth with the actual, with the line work and the actual stitch out to kind of give me an idea of where I'm at. All right. Then you just want to get a good trace here. Um, actually, let's try this. Let's try. Um, Let's try to see if we could be a little efficient here. All right, we select this, we select everything in here, and we're going to create a simple offset, okay, which I want zero offset, a uh, zero millimeter offset. All right, there it goes, gave me a nice, uh, let's see. Hide others. All right, I see what happened. Uh, unhide all. All right. So this is my this is my outline. All right. So what I was about to do right now, it just did it kind of automatic. Uh, what I want to do, just kind of fix it up a bit. H. I'm gonna make these straight lines. So delete these. All right. Just so I don't have any tight turns right there. So I could just adjust this a bit. Put this over. All right, and really this outline is what's gonna give the, the details on this on this rows, all right? So as you saw, I kind of had some good details um, when I did the rows, when I showed you the rows, all right? And this is the one where we gotta take our time and kind of get a good outline, all right? Man. And then if you wanna select multiple nodes, Use uh, your shift key. Okay. Uh, actually, here, I could delete this one. Then H, bring this guy in a bit. Yep. Look at that. All right. Here, just let's fix. All right, this is really the tedious part of digitizing. But the thing is, uh, sometimes if you send this out, right, the majority of the time you're going to send out your files. A lot of times you're going to send it out. Uh, your digitizer is going to make all the thinking for you. But if there's anything you got to tweak, 
right? If you have the software, you can make little small tweaks. Something sometimes a little small tweak is the is uh, it's all it's what it takes to turn like a normal design into a great design. All right, so by knowing these little tweaks, all right, bam, we got a good trace here. Okay, so we start with this, with this trace. Now we're gonna add the details inside. All right, let me see if I got any questions. It looks like, uh, give me one sec. Um, all right, because we're about to get into the details of this rose. All right, uh, we're gonna start talking about. Uh, branching. I know we haven't done branching in a while, right? But I think branching is one of the most powerful tool in the digitizing software, right? So definitely check your digitizing software. If you have uh, branching, then you definitely can do uh, some cool stuff, all right, that we're going to talk about right now. All right. Uh, good morning, Oscar from Bedford, Texas. All right. Sidar, good morning. All right. Good to have you. All right, we got a question from T-Town. If I had the hatch versions, do you think we could get the tools on top like that where you change the stitch? Um, I know they have uh, the newer version, uh, hatch three, which I haven't used. Uh, that was the main reason why I got Wilcom, how, why I went from hatch to Wilcom, because here on Wilcom, I have all these tools, like just real quick, like click, click, I got it here. Uh, hatch, a lot of the features, you got to go in, and you gotta select it uh, manually. If it has a if it has a hot key, then you could maybe push it right. You could probably find a quicker way to do it. Uh, but I'm not exactly sure if you could how much of the tools you can put on the hatch right now. All right, good question, good question. And then TMG, can you change Wilcom native file? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Wilcom and Hatch, they're from the same company. All right, Hatch is Wilcom, so you should be able to open it. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, on the Wilcom, sometimes you have to save it under the Wilcom Hatch version. All right. All right, we got my brother in the house. All right, from Van Nuys, California. All right. Just a FYI, I'll be moving to California next year, so by June. I'll be in San Diego, right? So I'm going to change duty stations. Uh, right now, I'm in Northern Illinois. I'm going to start the year, right? The first half of the year, I'll be in Virginia. And then the second half, I'll be in San Diego for good. All right, just kind of FYI, a lot of cool stuff happening next year, which I'm super excited about. All right. Um, Martin. Does anyone know if there's a good subscription-based digitizing software? Uh, so the digitizing, it's not really like uh, Adobe, where Adobe has the, the, the subscription. Every, everything on um, digitizing, it's all pay for. Like you pay one time, and then you pretty much keep the, the, the software. But I don't think there's any um, subscription. It's all paid for. I've been using the lowest level of Chroma and it is, yeah. So the lowest level, that one's like to open up files, just to make sure you can replay the file, like the DST files. Uh, that's what I think is good for and to do very basic, basic minimum stuff. All right. But uh, for right now, if you're starting out, okay, you're going to send out a lot of stuff to your, uh, to your digitizer. And what I would recommend anytime a digitizer sends it back, just study it. Study your designs. Kind of ask yourself why the digitizer is doing it this way. Okay, you can learn a lot. So even with the lowest uh, level of any software, you could still learn because you could put that uh, replay button and just see it's uh, stitch out on your screen. And then um, TNG upgrade to Chroma Lux is much better than the base Chrome. Yeah, eventually you're gonna have to. You're going to have to level up. All right. Good morning, youngsters. All right. Uh, and then Barb. Yep. Exactly what I was saying. All right. Um, and 
and then Martin. All right, this is a good question right here. All right, uh, TMG, is it better or as or as complete as Hatch or will come? Just uh, I would recommend if you want to start out with Hatch, you could start out with Hatch and then upgrade to will come. So you'll get a discount if uh, you if you turn in your Hatch. Like let's say uh, let's say you use Hatch for like a year and you kind of you kind of overgrown it or you're kind of ready for the next thing you could turn in you could turn in your uh and swap out your hatch and get willcom and they'll kind of discount a price for you all right so you'll get credit for that all right oh bam bam and then eric wang why do you put start and stop points outside of objects um so I put start wherever that part of the design is gonna start, and then a stop where I, where I where I know it's gonna jump from one portion of the design to the next one. So you have control when you're digitizing. You have control where you want to uh, where uh, like the direction of your needle, like where do you want it to move? All right, you're telling it to like okay, go into this space. You're gonna start in this space, and by the time you're done, I want you to end at this exact space that way when we start this next portion of the design right we start here all right if that kind of makes sense which i'll kind of talk about right now when we do all right good morning l l l all right all right oh all right uh i am quaid i bought the gen 2 definitely worth every penny yep it's so difficult. Yep, yep. Yeah. All right. The Gen 2, right? Change your life right there. All right. And then Barb agrees also. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're doing hats, like that's our main thing is hats. All right. If you're into the hat business, I would definitely it just holds the it just holds the hat, right? Into three the standard hoops. It holds the hat in one area. A Gen 2 holds it in three different areas. So, And then um, Bevy Jean, uh, I really like in Brilliance because it's pay as you go. Plus any updates are still free in the modules. All right, cool. All right. I might, I, I'm thinking about next year, just uh, purchasing in Brilliance, uh, playing around with it and just kind of, uh, because I do get a lot of questions on a brilliance, so maybe uh, uh, I'll see how. I'm pretty sure it has to be very similar, right? Uh, the concept, the everything behind digitizing is pretty much similar. So, all right, let's move. Uh, let's go ahead and let's continue. All right, I'll come back to questions. Um, let's. All right, what I want to do, I want to add the details on this rose. All right, I want to add the details. Let's move that. All right. So we get the walking stitch, digitize open shape. Every software has this one right here, all right? This walking stitch right here. What I want to do, I'll start here, all right? I'm just going to add the details all right of these lines i'm just going to go as much as possible we'll connect it right here all right so right now i'm just going to there there's not going to be any uh science behind how i'm doing it right now Afterwards, I'm going to make this all connect. Yeah, oh. All right. So this is going to take some time real quick. Just give me one sec to make this black. Um, and the more details you want to put, right, the nicer it's going to look. Um, I'm just kind of what I'm doing right now. I'm putting all the details of this black border. All 
right? And I'm, I made that center one. When I first started, I made that center run. And I just kind of go off based off that center. What I want to avoid is any repeats, any unnecessary overlaps. Yeah, so right now all this is going to make sense. All right. This is where branching, right? This is where you put your software to use right now. Okay, and I'm just kind of basing it off where that center line was at. Try and get as much details. All right, just give me one second. Cause... Kind of want to cover these lines pretty good. All right, slowly starting to look like a rose. Okay. Just, and then what I want to do, because right now, let's see, these trims, they're just going up and up. Okay, but I want all this to be done in one shot. And then here, um, so when I did that first sample, I had included a lot of these details on the leaf, like this one coming perpendicular to this one, right? But it just made it look very busy. So instead of putting all that detail, I just need one little line, all right? All right, let me see. Up here, yeah, I need this one here. Um, all right, I think we're good. Yep, all right, now it looks like a rose, looks like a nice clean rose. All right, trims showing I have 21, right? That's very unnecessary. There's been a time when I used to send out my, um, when I was first uh, working with different digitizers. There was one time I got a file back and I had like 70 cuts on a basic design. So I don't know if it was just the digitizer just forgot to do like a minor detail. All right, but the stuff you got to look out for. Uh, here, I kind of have this line kind of connecting with that. So I want to fix it. Maybe I bring it down. Uh, H. Make it like that. All right. Bam, bam. Okay, I think it looks cool right there. Now, what I want to do, combine all these. All right, this is where the power of branching okay, comes in hand. Okay, so I push I. I is short here for branching. Let me see if I can find branching here. Branch right here automatically sequence and group like embroidery objects all right so it's automatically going to sequence it's gonna it's going to 
figure out the best way to uh, make this all into one stitch. Now, what I did and uh, when I opened up the show and I showed you the first um, the first stitches, uh, I tried my first sample was with a triple run, triple run stitch, and it just looked too busy, too packed, and it looked good just when the single one. So I was good with that. All right. So when I push I. On the bottom left hand corner, if you can see, it says enter entry point. So it's telling me where do I want to start. So I'm going to start here, bottom left. All right. Uh, there is no correct answer where to go. Okay. There is no correct answer, it's whatever you want. Okay. So I'll start here and then it's going to ask me, where's your exit? And I'll end here. All right. Now, if you see this bottom here, all right, it made it all into one stitch. All right. So let me hide others. All right, so let me replay this one. Okay, this is how it looks now when I push the replay. Hold on, it's gonna do it super fast right now. I'll play the. Oh, actually, let me slow it down. Let's zoom in. All right, push play here. All right, this is kind of slow motion right here. Uh. So it's going to follow that outline that I did in the beginning. And then it's going to kind of figure out the best way. All right, very useful for these type of uh, detail type work. Because if we were to try to plan this out and sequence it ourselves, all right, we're going to be here for a minute. And all right, so and if and if it's if there's something you don't you don't like, like a specific route that you don't like, you can always choose different starting points and end points. Bam, right there. Exactly where I told you end. All right. All right. And hide all. All right, now. Let's go ahead and let's do the outside portion, all right, of the, um, let's go, let's do this, or this critical point here, all right. So here, this is where uh, column A, right, one of the most popular parts, all right, uh, let's see if I got some questions right here. Uh, all right. Good morning, Veronica. Hi, I'm new. What about Embrilliant? Embrilliant? Yeah, very popular digitizing software. All right. Um, that's the one that I said earlier that I might I might get it just to kind of play around with it. And uh, just because I get so many questions about Embrilliant. But yeah, I know it's a very popular one. All right. Kylie from San Antonio, Texas. All right. And then Salty Hatch has a trial. Yep. Very good trial for 30 days. All right. Um, Griff Cole. Hi, quick one. How do you change the underlay stitch direction for the Tommy stitch or do we have to change the top? No, 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 no. We'll, we'll change it right now. I'll show you. And then uh, appreciate that youngster. All right, yeah. Go ahead, hit that like button. All right. Thank you for that. All right. Uh, all right, Eric, can Gen 2 hoop allow to use onto? Yep, yes, you can. And then uh, branching give you two runs. Yeah, it'll give you two. Yeah, that is what I like about it. You get exactly two runs when you branch. Yeah, that's what it was doing also right here. All right, good, good, good. All right, let's move forward here. Uh, for that, for that uh, tatami stitch question, changing the uh, the angle, H, you go to reshape. So here, when I do the reshape, this is where you change your angle. So here you could change it at a 90, okay? And it'll change it. So you don't, you don't have to change any uh anything else you just tell it where you want it the angle to be at 
。はい。あ、uh, Yeah, let's go here.、Uh, so, here, column A. All right.、Uh, one thing we want to look at, okay, we want to look at is the sizes of our stitches. All right. So, here, okay, we're 0.81 millimeter. We're definitely too small for a sand stitch. All right. Definitely too small for a sand stitch. What we have to do here is increase our stitches. So, what, what I usually do, I'll digitize it according to the design here, and then I'll bump it up with a、uh, pool compensation. All right. Well, I'll show you what pool compensation does. All right. And the reason why I like it like that so, some people, when they, when they digitize, they'll automatically add it. Right. They'll probably go here. They'll automatically add the extra sizing already. All right, which can work, but now we're kind of changing the, the, the design a tad bit. All right. What I like to do, oops, escape. Okay. I just like to add that pool compensation and it'll, it'll add、uh, bigger sand stitches. All、right, so for example, here, all right, I'll start here. I'll just digitize it according to the design. All right, so here in this,、uh, these critical points here, all right, different ways to do it. All right, we could put it running here. And then what pull compensation does, all right, I'll show you right here. All right, let's go up to pull comp. Okay,、uh, pull comp is always usually set at 0.17, like that's just standard. All right, if we change it to 0.5, all right, before I change it to 0.5, let me just measure this to kind of give you an idea. When I measure this right now, I'm at 1.08. Okay. If I get a pool comp of 0.5, right? It makes it way bigger. So now when I measure it, okay, now when I measure it, right, 1.74. All right. So that 0.5, right, because, or that 0.5, right? Actually, let me see. 0.5. Yep. All right. So it just gives me that extra. And then here is that pull comp. So this is where I designed it. M. If I measure it from here to here, that's that 0.5 extra that it gives you. All right. So if your stitches are too small, okay, that's one way to kind of make them bigger. Okay. All right.、Uh, actually, Let me see. I'm at the hour mark. All right. Let me pull up the one that I've already done just because I got to speed it up a bit because I want to I stitch it out right now.、Um, all right. Give me one second. Let me pull up this one here.、Um, and then if you have any questions, let me know. Before I edit, it's to a Calavera. All right, and look at that. Looks nice and clean right here. Switch this up. All right, let's kind of look at some of these settings right here. All right. And then this is a good question right here What is the difference between branch? And red work tool. So, red work, it, it does、uh, a certain amount of passes. Branching does a certain amount of passes. Very similar. Okay, very similar.、Uh, to get the exact answer, all right,、uh, I'm going to have to get back to you with that answer, the exact 
difference. All right. I know that the difference is how many passes it does. All right. But I don't know the exact how many runs each one, uh, the difference between each one is. All right. But that's really what the difference is. And then uh, we quilt. Uh, is that your object edge or is it edge underlay? Uh, I'm thinking you're talking about the tatami when we change the angle. Uh, that wasn't any. That wasn't any of the underlay. I was just changing the the direction itself to, on top of it. If that was your question, I don't know if that's what you're talking about. All right. So right here, what what, what I was just talking about right here. Okay. All right, right. And then um, we quilt red. Redwood is a stitch. Branching is a tool. Okay. The difference. All right. Um, here, I already have it branched out. I'm going to break it apart. All right. Just so we could kind of see the details of it. Um, here, my pool comp. So I put it at 0.50. All right. Um, these teeth, all right, let me see. So here, let me see, pull comp 0 0.40. So if, if you're doing a 0 0.40 pull compensation, so as you see here, the teeth, right? If I were to leave it, it would probably be too small just the way it's designed. So definitely want to make it bigger. Um, That 0.4 is doing 0.4 on each side. So you get 0.8 additional millimeters on that size. All right. Um, let me redo this. Let me let me replay this. Redo. Okay. Just go ahead. Let's replay this. All right. Um, so here, all right, we're going to replay and then I'm going to stitch it out just so we could see it live. All right. It's like in embroidery, like one hour is nothing in embroidery. All right. Usually our classes go for two hours, but we're going to kind of, I want to stitch this out. Um, all right, let's speed this up a bit. All right, so we saw that tatami is now it's going to do that outline. Okay, just doing that running stitch, and then it's going to stop, it's going to jump and do the next one. So it jumped there, it's going to do this whole thing, then it's going to jump in, do that. So there's the underlay. And it's going to move from one side. And it's going to stop right there and jump and do the nose. All right. And then it's going to do the nose. Start from. It's going to start from the bottom and on the top. And then it's going to stop. It's going to wait for the next color. Now we do the rows. All right. So we do the green part first the the leaves of the rose so it walked there just like we digitized it then we walk then we go here then it's going to stop do a color change all right and then we do the red speed it up a bit so it does the underlay there and then whatever whatever angle we want it to go at all right. Reason why I chose this angle so it could end right at that very tip on the top part of the rose. All right. Then once it does this, it still doesn't look like a rose. It looks like a rose right when we. So here I did a different. Uh, I traced the rose first. All right. So it all depends how you traced your your outside border. Okay. But still the same concept. All right, we got the details there. Bam, stop exactly there. Okay, now here. All right. Um, 
does the teeth, I have an underlay going. And then from here, it's going to do the teeth. All right. I'll tell you that the teeth, very tedious, okay, very tedious. It's just repetition over and over. This top part, once I did this top part, I could just uh, replicate it and it kind of matches the bottom side. Okay, so I could just copy and paste through the bottom side. All right, now it's gonna do the middle part of the teeth. Okay, and then this is where I, um, this whole portion here is where I branched it out. So it's gonna, So you could break it up into pieces. Uh, you don't have to branch everything out all in one shot. Uh, I branched out the whole side all in one shot. So here it's doing that critical portion right there. It's going to close it out. All right, let's speed this up a bit. We'll stitch this out right now. All right, and then um, just as a reminder, I'm gonna put this up for download so you could kind of uh, replay it for yourself and break it apart and and kind of do your own thing, put your own little design instead of the rows, right? You could put anything, that's why. And then also what you can do, right, up here, H. We put H, even though it's branched out, you can still edit some of this stuff, right? You could you could either break it apart and lose the branch, or you could select this top part, and then you can raise the head a bit, like if you need more space. All right. So if you want to put like your own design right here, all right. All right. See, okay, I think I get it. Branch one can use on any object and right what all right. All right. All right. Let's see. Bam. All right, let's go ahead. Let's stitch this out so we can kind of see it uh in real time. Let me switch our cameras. Give me one sec. All right, let's turn on the GoPro. Let me turn this off right here. Don't save it. All right. Give me one second. Let me turn. All right. Let's see if I got camera. What camera is this? Bam. All right. All right. We're looking good right here. All right, so right here, I just got regular felt. All right. Get a good view right here. Trying to get a good angle. All right, we're looking good right here. Let's do a quick trace. And let me make sure my colors are good for blue. Put this all in automatic. Mm, all right, I think my colors are good.
It's a little bright, but... And then Bevagy. Uh, so when you branch, you draw it out, then you select all the outline you want branch to hit. Yep. Yep. All you do is uh, trace it. You wanna you wanna avoid unnecessary uh, uh, overlaps. You do want them to connect. So you do want your stitches to connect, but you wanna uh, you wanna avoid unnecessary uh, overlaps. But yeah, once you uh, once you branch it out, and then you always want to replay it because the branching it's gonna do a lot of the stuff automatic, and it doesn't always it's not a hundred percent fail proof. You always want to make sure that uh, it's doing what you want it to do. And then Matthew, uh, yes, it's pretty much that way. It's easier than manually pat pathing it out, but less refined. Yeah, because if I if I were to try to uh, manually, which you could, you could put start stop on all the. It's a lot of planning, and that's it's just quicker just to uh, branch it out. All right, right now it's doing the leaves. You see. Yeah. All right, so All right, so I did the leaf portion all in one shot. Now it's going to do the the red part of the rose. So the best thing I think the best thing about digitizing, it's like everything that you told them the, the software to do, that's exactly what it's gonna do. Like, so we talked about the, the angle, the stitch angles, and exactly what you tell it to do, it, that's what it's gonna do. So there shouldn't be any surprises. It should be exactly what you created. So from the beginning, when we kind of, um, when we kind of mapped out our plan, right? So I like to map it out on paper, map it out on paper, do it in the software, and then see it all come together in the final stitch. So I think this is this should be the easiest part. Once you push start, right? But of course, what what you see in the in the software is not always going to come out. So you're always looking out. My first run, I'm always kind of analyzing uh, that sample run, that first sample run. So like I showed you in the beginning, when I showed you that first sample, it didn't come out exactly like how I want it to be. That's why uh, on this second run, I made like the, the little tweaks. So here, this is where our detail of the rows. And this is a 2.5 inch design. So if you make it bigger, you could just even make more and more details. Okay, so the bigger you get. So right here, it's gonna start with the teeth. So I started with just one big underlay. That straight line was a big underlay. 
And then here when it's doing the teeth, since I already put that single run underlay, I don't have to add underlay on the teeth. And just a heads up for next week, for next week live, uh, I'm going to get into the, just as a preview, I'm going to talk about digitizing my favorite logos, right? The reason why I got into embroidery really was the major league baseball hats, right? The LA hats, right? San Diego. Padre hats, right? Those are like the type of designs I like to do. Very simple, uh, but they really stand out. So I really want to focus on Major League Baseball logo hats. Okay, so kind of just a preview of what I'm working on. I kind of started this week. All right, so usually if I have like a big topic I want to talk about, uh, um, I'm planning it out kind of like two, three weeks beforehand. So. I'm kind of excited for next next week's class, all right? So just as a FYI to look out for that class next week. All right, now it's, now let me see. Now it's gonna do the skull all in one shot. So when I did, when I did digitize it, this was all broken up into numerous pieces, all right? But just by branching it out, right? It's allowing me to do all this in one shot. All right, so it looks pretty good at this angle. We got a good angle right here. Uh, this bottom part, the sand stitch, let me see. It looks pretty thin. It is at two millimeters. Yeah. Let me see. Let me pull up the design. Yeah, that bottom, th this outline, the outline is about two millimeters. So when I digitize it, the design has it, the actual artwork has it at um, one millimeter. But by putting the, by putting the pool comp at 0.5, it, it brought it up to uh, two. 
So th that that last piece right there. All right. That last piece was unnecessary. Okay. So um, what I think I did, I didn't include that in the branching. So it, it, it saved that last piece for last. All right. All right, let's check this out. Let me light up the, let's light up the photo box. All right, let's see. Give me one sec. Switch cameras to bam. So this was like our initial plan right here. All right. All right. I don't know if you noticed there was this unnecessary stitch that happened, it, but it's 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 no problem. It just I could have branched everything in one shot, but it looks like I left that piece out. All right. All right. Let's see. Let's get a zoom in. All right. So this is right off the machine. I haven't even touched it yet. All right. Just these cuts. These are these are just two jump stitches that I'll cut here. All right, so let's check it out. And then cranking man. My daughter would love it. Yeah, I'm gonna put this on the. Just give me um, after the show. I'm gonna put it as a download so you could stitch it out and analyze it. Um. All right, so just like we kind of drew it up and we analyzed it, digitized it, all right, came out. So let's see. Yeah, these are, this one here can easily be cut. All right, I just cut it later. All right, so let's see, uh, Matt, do you? A tip to find unnecessary trims is I open two new files in Welcome and I copy the first color into the first one. I evaluate for trims, fix them, then I move it. All right, I'm gonna have to check that out. All right, all right. It's a good tip right there. All right. Then uh, Matt, looking to do 300 patches today. All right. That looks like a busy Saturday right there. All right. And then, uh, great. I would love to do a New York Yankees. Yup. So I've been, like, for the longest. I, that's, that's what I like to do is analyze the Major League Baseball hats. Like, all my hats, I, I, I've opened them up because I've they look so good the major league baseball hats and i i just want to see that all the little details of how they they come about getting all their designs nice and clean and sometimes it's just like basic things that we always do uh over here all right let's switch over here all right i think it looks good here all right bam hour and a half just like that and then uh Bevy Jean, so dumb questions, but are there the T? All right, I don't know right there. All right, so hour and a half, just like that, right, real quick. All right, uh, I'm going to have this file available so you could just analyze it. Uh, I'll see if I work on different files. I think this one's pretty cool. All right. Um, all right, so main thing here today, right, just to move a little faster, Move a little quicker, efficient. All right. I would say uh, map it out, draw it out, print these out. Okay. Because trust me, six six months from now, you're going to forget about any designs that you're working on. All right. And then you got to recreate the wheel. You got to do everything from scratch and you kind of got to remember everything that you're doing. All right. So here, when I showed this one here, this one, this is something that I just started to do. All right, but it's really helped tremendous. So anytime I stitch something out, even if it's a bad stitch out, okay. So this one here, this was round number one. Like I found uh, numerous little details that I was gonna change, 
instead of tossing them out and saying, hey, you know, I'm, I'm not going to use the sample. I don't want to show it to nobody. Okay. Actually, if you write down what exactly you don't like about it, okay, you can keep it for yourself. You could also keep it for customers because sometimes customers, they're hard headed and they're like, hey, I want it like this no matter what. And you could just tell them, okay, we can do it like this, but this is what happens if we go this route. Okay. This is how it's going to look if we go this route. So, I think sometimes it's very good to keep all your bad samples, all right? So if you ever have somebody, right? And I know everybody has had those customers, hard-headed customers that do not want to take your advice and just show them, let them know this is what happens if we go this route, all right? So, all right, so, uh, all right, right. So, lot nah, thank yous. All right, appreciate everybody. Right for hanging out today. All right, make sure uh, if you have any questions, if you're catching us on the replay, make sure you leave any of your questions down below. All right, and uh, don't forget to hit that like. All right, let YouTube know that we are in the house today. Okay, that we are learning. If you have any suggestions, I think there's 13 weeks left to this year. Okay, if you have any uh, suggestions for any classes or anything you want me to add into the classes let me know i'm all about taking suggestions um any feedback that you got all right i'm all about feedback and always making our class better and better and better better as we go all right thank you everybody for stopping by i'll see you on the next one peace out everybody